Good morning on another day here in Split. It's the 29th of November and it's going to be a tiny bit different than the days before. You see, today I'm actually heading out of the country and going to Bosnia and Herzegovina. Going to a few places. One of them is Podice, Mostar, as well as Kravitsa Waterfall. So it's going to be an action packed day with a completely different culture and I'm rather excited. Wow, I've made it to Bosnia. <laughs> so let me tell you a bit about this journey so far, rather than get into this town of Pachite, the village of Pachite first. Basically, it was a wild and long journey. We went through two border crossings, through the main mountain range, lining the sea, and seeing quite a lot of regions. From the coastline, the Dalmatian coast, which is really populated by tourists, to more poorer regions, and then into Bosnia. I'll be honest though, Bosnia it gets a bad rap here, Bosnia and Herzegovina. You have a lot of people talking about the war and just how poor it is. But what I've seen so far, which is a more well-off region, has been fine. It's been lovely. People have been driving nice cars. Houses have been upkept. Streets have been good. Good restaurants. Of course, tourism is not as booming here yet, but it's been good so far. So now the town of Pachite has been a strange place, you see. It's been a an point in history where it's been a kind of a border town, border village for many years, millennia, and it does overlook the river and a few other things, and the river is a huge resource, so it has been kind of really important for a very long time, and now we're going to explore it and see a bit about it. So what do you actually see here? Well, you see round chimneys, medieval houses, atop clad roofs, as well as really nice gardens. You know, this town is really famous for its fruit juices, such as pomegranate, raspberry, strawberry, cherry. It's really famous for that and it's meant to be amazing. As well as this, you can get really beautiful sweets here. It's meant to be a super charming village and it is so far. Due to rough history, you know, the war and all of the divides in the whole population, the currency except in these Hersey regions in Bosnia is the kuna from Croatia, the euro, as well as the BAM, which is the national Bosnia and Herzegovina currency. Exchange rates are okay, but they recommend using different currencies in different regions for the best prices. It's super interesting. You can see the aftermath after such a kind of period of disaster. I figured out the mystery why there's so much juice, fresh juice here. Well, because these regions are phenomenal for growing it, you see. All these bushes, all these trees behind me are pomegranate trees, which is a really nice fruit that I love, and I'm really very excited to try pomegranate juice, fresh pomegranate juice. Wow, wow, wow. I may have just picked up one of these pomegranate juices for one euro, one euro for one bottle, and it's the most delicious pomegranate or fruit juice I've ever had. You know, you do see pomegranate juices and other juices in supermarkets, but they don't compare, they don't come close to this. They're a bit sour, a bit pungent, and you can't have more than half a glass without kind of feeling a bit too sugary, too saturated. This is sweet, it's sugary, but not too sugary. It just flows really, really well, and it's so delicious. I'm actually astounded. So this Pachite village has just been fabulous, in my opinion. Jews were left from their synagogue and they doesn't have their synagogue today. So if they want to pray, they have to go to the Sarai, which is the closest city during their holidays and everything. So we have made it to Masa, which 
has a very long history. It began like a village with the bridge and it was a really weird thing. Then it kind of grew, grew, grew and it was a capital city at one point. Now it's just a really popular tourist attraction. I believe well, about 107,000 people permanently live here, but the tourists have just increased year on year. The most recent of which is the whole Chinese tourism. There's a lot of them in the city just coming here to see a bridge and see everything else. It's pretty wonderful. So the city was founded in 1452 and since that time, as I mentioned, a huge history. Nowadays it's trying to become a UNESCO heritage site, the old town. Currently only the bridges, the Stary Mosque, which is uh, the main feature of this town again. But I believe it will happen in a few years because, well, it's very well kept. This is the bridge, the bridge I see behind me, Stare Mast. It was built by Suleiman the Magnificent in 1567. So as you see behind me, there is people jumping and preparing to jump off this bridge. Believe it or not, but locals actually do it all year round for 25 euros. So once you raise the money, they will jump off for a big show. It's pretty cool, pretty wonderful. And if you do want to do as a tourist, there's only a few hundred people who have done it so far. You do need training on this small platform behind me, the one I've shown you. And if you get that training in your past, you can basically jump off the big bridge, although it is very dangerous. It's around 22 meters high but the water depth is about six meters, so if you're not careful, you can pretty much get swept away and concussed or something like that. It's really cool though, it's a cool tradition and I've seen people doing it on YouTube and it's wonderful. So I think you'd be very interested to know that the east side of this town is the Bosnian side. So Bosnians live there while the west is the Croat side, Croatians. And that also corresponds with religions. You know, Croatians love Catholicism and there's Catholic churches while the Bosnians are mostly Muslim with mosques around. It's a very common place here. When in Bosnia, you should recognize that it's been roughly 25 years after the war ended and the repercussions are still very familiar and commonplace everywhere. You see, you see kind of the destruction after it, you see people rebuilding after it, and the locals are quite a bit petty about it as well. So it's better not to actually mention it, unless you're questioning a tour guide or someone not in the villages, because they don't really want to talk about it. That's what I've heard at least. It's very interesting, but what you should know is that, although there is a lot of abandoned buildings in Mosser, for instance, such as the sniper tower, you should really see it as a plus and they're rebuilding it, not as it was in the past where it was all destruction. So it's getting a lot better and yeah, shouldn't stop you from coming here. As you can see, the views of this town are pretty incredible. And a common place here is the bad mills, like I mentioned, as well as street art. There's quite a bit of it, and it's quite good. It's really good, actually, in my opinion. Along all of these old town streets, you pretty much have a bazaar. You pretty much have a lot of bazaars, a lot of boutiques, a lot of silk, cashmere, cotton, wool even and projects that you wouldn't find anywhere else in the world apart from this city and parts of Bosnia as well. It's pretty incredible. I'm 
kind of in love. The prices are reasonable. They're not very cheap, but you know, they're comparable to other touristic regions and mostly cheaper than most touristic regions in Europe, which is really nice. And yeah, they do accept three currencies, like I mentioned. One euro is two of their currency, the BAM. A few thoughts on Mosser now that my time here is coming to a close. Essentially, the streets are really rough, they're super slippery, slippery. the rocks, the cobblestones are very, very polished, so it's very easy to slip. And well, quite a lot of tourists here as well. How about actually coming here yourself? Be cautious about those things, pickpockets as well. Another thing that you should be careful about is just your money, because the exchange here, you accept like three currencies, so just be sure to keep that in mind. Apart from that, you should be fine. You probably don't need more than two hours in this town, in this place, but it is really key to just spend your time there, drink a bit of Bosnian coffee, which was lovely, I had to admit, and just relax. Okay, so one last piece of history about Mostar before we go to the next location, which is most likely Kravitsi Waterfalls. This bell tower and the church that I'm right beside is actually the tallest in Europe. And the reason for that is basically, in the times where this kind of region was split in religion and that, your Catholic churches could be only a certain height. They couldn't be taller than any mosque. As you probably know, mosques aren't huge. So that, that whole thing got kind of destroyed, the religion changed. The bell towers just wants to be as big as possible and show the power of Christianity. And that's why it's currently the biggest one in Europe. It's pretty phenomenal. Right now I'm in Kravica Waterfalls, which is about 40 kilometers south of Moster. This is one that's recommended for many people to come. It's open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Outside of that, you can actually come here and visit, but it's unpaid. This time of the year, October to May, it's three year entry, and people do recommend it for most like half a day or so. However, it is nearly sunset and it is getting cold, so we're only gonna be here for 45 minutes today. Let's check it out. The story behind the name Kravita starts with a story about a small cow. But to find out more of it, you need to get Googling because it's quite interesting and yeah, you should check it out. So you see that sign that's saying no kind of religious rituals or acts? Well, there's actually a funny story behind that. You see, there were some it Italians, Polish and Irish people here who kind of took this as a pilgrimage location and started in religious rituals and essentially this whole area protecting this place and keep upkeeping it decided, no, we don't want this. We want to preserve Caribbean's natural beauty and they put up these signs to prevent people from doing those rituals. I'm not 100% sure on the religious rites and rituals that were being performed, but like, could have been anything from baptisms to people praying really heavily. Bear in mind though, it's, it was all Catholic, so makes it limited. One of the main reasons why this is such an attraction is all the activities that surround us. You have restaurants, you have food places, places to get coffee, ice cream, beer, and you have all the water activities as well as kind of like a boardwalk that you can walk around and get different pictures. It's a space where you can really spend a nice day. However, like I just said, during this time of the year and this time of the day, 
most of that is closed down, so your options for doing stuff is limited. This gush of water behind me, falling down, is actually 28 meters high, and it's rather large. You know, of course, there's bigger ones, but here in Bosnia and Herzegovina, this is one of the most impressive ones, and it's definitely worth a visit. This is a really well put together place and I could complain about some things like the boats not being open right now or some of the paths being a bit too rocky or not enough railings but all of these things don't really matter when you're actually looking at the whole spectacle of the waterfall and how beautiful it is and how just natural everything here is because yes it is upkept but it's not overdone like a lot of these new modern urban environments. Having walked around here and just looking at this beautiful spectacle of a waterfall and natural landscape you really don't notice the small hindrances such as unpaved roads, rocky footpaths, loose ground, not enough railings etc. Things like that don't really matter in the grand scheme of things where you're just enjoying the natural beauty and the area of real prominence because you just feel at home here and it's really nice and just wonderful in my opinion. I could spend a whole day here maybe even two just coming here for a few hours each day and just enjoying it for what it really is. And this concludes Kravice. It's been a really short time here. I love walking up the stairs. It's about seven, five minutes downwards, but probably closer to 15 upwards. Plus, there was a lot to explore down there. A lot of it was closed off, but we still walked to the far end. Now, my family and I are making our way back to Split. We should be there around 8 p.m. and I think that'll be it for today.